Welcome to Black Pumps TV and welcome to this special edition of our spotlight on the people that we care about, on our influencers and the people that impact our community. We're in the home of Chike Mweke. It's actually a very beautiful home and um, in the beautiful Palos Verdes. Chike, thank you so much for having us in your home. Thank you, Nani. I've been really looking forward to this day. Uh, a sit down interview with you and uh, Black Pumps TV. So I'm really honored. I feel very honored. Same here. I say it's about time that we do this because I know that you're doing a whole lot for the community. You're the publisher of Life and Times. Yes. And you do the community festival every year. Mm -hmm. And one is coming up soon. Yes, on Friday and Saturday actually. It oh, is a oh. two day event. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So what are we expecting this year? Oh, um, it's going to be great. Okay. Uh, usually it's an event that a lot of people in the community look forward to. Yeah. Uh, we look forward to it because it celebrates us. Yes. It celebrates our high achievers. Yes. It celebrates success stories. Yes. It celebrates people who are also impacting the community in the art, uh, mm -hmm. in music, in fashion, mm -hmm. in dance. All of that abundant talent in our community is showcased in those two days. And uh, you know the beauty about this year's event is that we actually put another spin on it. Yes. Uh, we are inviting um, renowned uh, fine artists from Nigeria okay. to do an art show on the fifteenth and the sixteenth. So it's a new addition to it, but looking forward to it. That's amazing. That's amazing. I think I know who it is, but okay. Yeah. But you know, there's a special thing going on this year as well. You're going to be celebrating your fiftieth birthday. Yes. Can we be the first to say happy birthday? Thank you. Uh, even though I know you did it in, in uh, Dubai. In Dubai yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. So how does it feel to be 50? Oh my God. Uh, my mom... You're no longer my, my mom, chicken now. My mom so. said, look, <laughs> you're, cel oh, you're celebrating this 50 like if you're the first person that turned 50. I said, <laughs> mom, because um, I thank God for the mm -hmm. grace of being 50. Yes. Knowing the life I led prior to now and all the um, near death experiences I had, mm -hmm. I th I'm thanking God really. It's actually a celebration of God's faithfulness, not that's right, not chicken working really. He's thanking God for His faithfulness because I remember that if it is not because of the faithfulness of God, I don't even know if I'll be here. So that's why I'm excited about fifty. Now I tell my mom I can sit with the elders now and start judging land matters. <laughs> land so matters and uh, 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 family family issues. Yeah. Certainly family disputes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. I'm it's excited. a good thing, you know. Like they always say, you know, a wine is not ready to be consumed, right? Yeah, that's Until true. it's aged. It is yeah. aged, yes. And that it becomes a fine wine. And so uh human beings, you yes. know, I kind of look at you as like an aged steak, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, which is very fine. So, yeah. so as you turned 50, you went to Dubai. Yes. And I follow you on Facebook, and I think like some of the captions that you had was what drew me closer. Some of them were very captivating. And one is where you talked about sailing in the Arabian Seas. Yeah. And you uh, talked about turbulence. Yes. I've, I've always had a close fascination with the ocean and the seas okay. uh, very close fascination okay um when we were growing up in uh in campus mm -hmm. uh i used to be part of the uh, fraternity uh mm -hmm. called the, the the paris confraternity okay uh, that i'm scared <laughs> <laughs> back, back in those days uh, back, back in those days yeah. and uh mm -hmm. sailing was uh something that we we we, we referred to in um allegorical times okay. uh, but um it's all part of the turbulence of growing up i've always been fascinated with the seas mm -hmm. uh and um for my 50th i said i wanted to do something that would reflect that fascination um and again i chose dubai because <clears throat> if i said to my siblings oh come to america it would be a wish that might not be met because the entire 
visa restriction and all that, mm-hmm. especially with present administration. Yeah. Some of them might not be granted visas. Okay. And I am very, very close to my siblings. We we grew up um, very close together. Part of the reason was my father died a little bit early when okay. I just left school. And um, I came to America, uh, came here in 1996, 21 years ago. I started okay. working in an African restaurant, greasy African restaurant in downtown Inglewood. <laughs> Washing dishes as a college graduate for yeah. three dollar fifty cents an oh, hour, wow. and out of that, I sent one hundred one fifty dollars every week back home for my siblings to go to school. Oh my gosh! I'm uh, <laughs> so I uh, practically raised them uh, with the help of my mom. Yeah. My mom was a school teacher. Imagine what school teachers get paid in Nigeria. Oh, wow. So with that, we combined and we, we were able to make sure that all of them went to school. And today, they are very successful people. My immediate junior brother is a very successful um, electrical engineer in Lagos. Okay. Um, uh, if I my immediate uh, junior sister, mm-hmm. the first girl in my house, mm-hmm. uh, lives in Dublin where she runs uh, three African stores in, mm. the, uh, in Dublin. Wow. The one after her, Ijoma, is uh, a college professor. Wow. Uh, just wow. Uh, promoted professor wow. in the University of Nigeria. And after her is my junior brother, mm-hmm. uh, who is um, an area manager of Stambik, one of the large banks, uh, banks yeah. in Nigeria. And the one that is last in my house, if I is a computer programmer in Ireland. And I say this not to reel out names and reel out this, but to show that, look, you can start with nothing and God can promote you to something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When my father died, there was no inheritance, there was no money anywhere, but my mother went down on her knees and I believed that God could do it for us. In fact, some people were mocking us, oh, are these kids all going to fall out of school because their father is no longer there? But God had other plans for us. Chike, I, this gives yeah. me such goosebumps. <laughs> I feel like crying. Uh, this is why we do this, you know, to get yeah. to... I didn't know this about you. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just amazing. It's, it's an incredible story. It so, is. when I turned... When I was going to turn 50, I, mm-hmm. I was thinking about a way to celebrate it with this close, neat mm-hmm. people in my life. Mm-hmm. We all struggled together. We all came together and we, we still remain very closely bonded. So no. I said, if I do this in America, they might deny them visa, they don't all come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Dubai is visa free for everybody from Nigeria. Yes. Uh, those from Europe who come, they live in Europe. Yes. A lot of them live in, uh, back home in Nigeria. Yes. I said, Dubai is visa free. Let's all gather together. And it was a great time. Yes. Eight days of staying together. It was a big family reunion. We all gathered together share story we will talk till late into the night mm. uh the mm. um the cousins and nephews mm. my sons from uche well, now became their headquarters wow. so they will talk into the night till about 1 2 a.m in the morning oh, awesome. the most painful thing for us was separating at the end of those eight days yes yes it I was, can, very, I, I, there was I, a I, lot of cries these children imagine. wanted to cry their hearts out i said no. look we'll do this again we'll do, yeah, yeah. So, I can imagine. I, I mean, there's nothing. I always say family is everything. Family is and everything. And if you know me, you know I'm big on family. Oh, no, I know. I'm I know so that. close to my family. I know family, the one so. family is very close knit. I yeah. know that too. Yeah, so, I know that uh, there's nothing like family. I'm telling no, you. There's nothing like Absolutely family. Nothing there's Absolutely nothing, nothing like family. Like, and I watched what you guys did. It was just awesome. Yes. You know, it was like. You didn't need any other person to, for that party. No, 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 no. Like, no, we kept it that way. Yeah. It was it was intentional. intentional we didn't invite yeah. anybody outside right. of the family. Yeah. I said some people were very mad. I said, no, no, relax. Yeah. We're gonna do the big celebration for everybody in LA. Yes. And that's what we're doing on the fifteenth and sixteenth. Yes. And again, I know you asked why Dubai. For the, the main the first reason was to make sure everybody could come. Yes. Then the second reason again was the entire story of Dubai is fascinating. Exactly. Uh, I went to the uh, the uh, museum, mm-hmm. uh, part of the tour that I did there. And I can't believe that this nation that doesn't have a lot of oil, actually the oil is in Abu Dhabi. Yes, yes. Uh, you, United Arab, Arab Emirates. Emirates right. well, Dubai doesn't have a lot of oil or even any oil. Well, it's still an oil money flowing. It's oil money <laughs> flowing in there. But, you know, it's the, vision. the fact that somebody, yes. Sheikh Abdullah, uh, 25 years ago, 
could think about a vision of a country that could um, piggyback on its closeness to the sea. Yes. The yes. port that feeds the uh, most of mm -hmm. uh, the Arabian Peninsula mm -hmm. and the United mm -hmm. Arab Emirates. Yeah. And the vantage position it had to attract tourism right. could transform a country of goat headers and camel rearers and falcon games for people right. into a thriving financial center, a thriving tourist center. Yes. Is a major fascination to me. It is, it is. It's, it's, a, major it's a beautiful place. It's a, it's beautiful, a beautiful place. place. I mean, it's like I remember when we got in there and we we're actually going to the Burj Arab. Yes. And my son, who's traveled the world, all he could say was, wow. wow. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, that, a wow. It's, it's that beautiful. It's a wow. But what I was thinking about it is like, you know, you kind of talk about turbulence, a lot of turbulence. And I, now I understand the turbulence because mm. you were in pirates. So. <laughs> 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 and so, yes. and so I said, okay. And then with Dubai, and I like that picture where you were just like looking up. And I'm like, hmm, what were you thinking? Gazing at all that beauties in Dubai is is part of you know the fact that Dubai came out of a bold vision yes emboldened me yes yes um Dubai that somebody could transform a country of goat headers that had nothing yeah and in twenty five years into so emboldened me mm -hmm. and somebody one of the drivers that took me around yeah. said that look. Most of downtown Dubai was built in the space of five years. Mm. And I'm like, why mm. can't we do something close to this? Why would somebody stay at the level of mundane and be chasing after pettiness, pettiness <laughs> and sh you know, w what is wrong with us if we can't dream big and think big, yes, you know? Yes. Uh, it was a challenge to me and I wanted to go to Dubai to get inspired. Right. And, and I was inspired. truly inspired. Right. You know, I was on the marina. I'm like, God, this looks like some dream. You know, yeah, the yeah. fact that you could build something out of a desert, yeah. that beautiful, mm -hmm. it was bold. You know, yeah. so for me, it's going to Dubai to draw inspiration. That look, like I said, I don't want to entertain any pettiness anymore. Yes. You know, anybody who wants to bring. Petty talk around me now is wasting time. Sometimes it comes with age, you know. Sometimes it comes with age. <laughs> I you know. are that age, you're like, you know what? No, I'm please. not dealing with all this. I don't you know? want to and deal you with any the, of You have this vision. So take us back to your childhood. How was your childhood? I know you lost your dad at an early age. But like every one of us, we dreamt, right? Yes. This is what we wanted our life to be. What was your childhood and what were your dreams of Chiki? At that time, Chiki at 50. Ah, uh, you know what? Publishing has always been something that I've been fascinated about okay. and drew. You know, I uh, in secondary school, I was writing. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, writing out a, 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 a secondary school rag called mm -hmm. Ted Eye. You know, we'll write it out about all the gossip happening within yeah. the campus. I will put it on the notice board in yeah. school. And people will gather around on Monday and read it. Yeah. And I did the same thing when I was at the University of Nigeria Enugu campus. I had I published a campus magazine. Okay. Uh, campus gossip, cancel with this happenings around campus, events mm -hmm. around campus. So, but I didn't study journalism. You know, I studied mm. city planning. Oh wow! Uh, but uh, my Leo, my fascination with writing yes. and the pool writing had on me continued. So okay. even when I got to Lagos in. Um, 1989, 1990, after school, I started writing for The Guardian. Okay. Uh, the leading intellectual newspaper in Nigeria in the, um, in the 90s. I started okay. writing for The Guardian, took a course in journalism, mm -hmm. and I was mentored by some great writers, Olatunji Dare, Femi Kusa. Um, yeah, uh, those, those uh, names. Yeah, those <laughs> names, yes. And of course, of yeah. course, I was uh, uh, close to Professor Wole Shoinka. Uh, back, back in those days. Okay. So, I have always been drawn to public discourse and uh, political discourse. Although I had a specialty then in the writing the Guardian for uh, uh, real estate matters mm -hmm. and environment and all that. So, but um, when I now came to America in 1996, 
that pull to be a writer continued. Okay. And um, I was contributing to the different fora, mm -hmm. Igbo forum, and Nigerian forum, all of that stuff. But, mm -hmm. you know, something changed in 2010. Okay. A friend of mine died, Uganda Prenze, yes. and the community said, well, can you put together a live book to celebrate this man? Mm -hmm. uh, the committee organizing um, his mm -hmm. funeral right. gave me that job. Right. Uh, Dr. Ejike Nibo, Tony yeah. Wude, yeah. the Abagana group, immediate group organizing yeah. said, mm -hmm. do this. And Ugo was somebody that impacted my life in a big way. He yes. was like a big brother. You know, he He's mentored a, was me. was a very good man. Yes, was very right? good man. He my mentored me. My husband's friend and they yes. were schoolmates or yeah. classmates at UCLA. He's a graduate of UCLA. UCLA, correct. He, he, he mentored me and I felt a personal challenge to celebrate him in a big way. Yes. So, in a hotel room in Sacramento, because I was on a conference mm -hmm. that weekend in Sacramento, uh, was sketched life and times, you know. Uh -huh. By the time I woke up, I usually like walking late in the night when I can think clearly and there's no distraction. Yeah. So that was how we put together the first sketch for Life and Times. Okay. I called a graphic artist, uh, Frank Ezele, who I used to work with in, mm -hmm. the, in those days to put together the ba, ba, banner strip, the masthead and all that. Yeah. And by the time I arrived there, it was ready. And we got to work and put it together. Mm -hmm. um, and the reception that live book had was so much that I got like 40 calls from people saying, Oh, we don't have a magazine in LA. What do we do about it? Why don't you yes. do something that will celebrate people even while they were alive? Yes. And that's how Life and Time started in 2010. Oh. So, so um, I think I remember reading that copy because I was at his uh, uh, wedding. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you did one when it actually made an impact on me was, I think you did one when Dolly's husband Yeah, passed. yes, yes, correct. Yes. So that's when uh, I, con I connected, connected Chicken Wicked to yes, Life and yes. Times. And then you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so... So but other than other than publishing though, you're also a real estate agent? Yeah, I do real estate. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm actually the incoming president of Ingo of Realtor for 2018. Wow. I'm a state director. I've been a state director for four years of the California Association okay. of Realtors. So real estate is actually the thing that that, that fits, fits me. <laughs> <laughs> that fantastic is community service. Because yeah. it's tough. Publishing is tough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Publishing and media is tough. So uh the thing that puts Food on my table yeah. uh, is my real estate business because besides uh, agency, I also pick up properties, buy, fix, uh, okay. rehab, and sell. So Ooh. that's something I do. We uh, should do a course in that one. <laughs>